Now we're going to have a go at doing some colour mixing. And for this I've got the flat shape brush, um, three pigments, three colours, red, yellow, blue. These, as you can see, are acrylic. Uh, I think you might be using some powder colour. Essentially they're the same. The difference is the pigment, in this case yellow, is mixed in with a binder which is uh, PVA glue. So it's almost the same as your school white glue. If you're using powder colour, uh, the pigment is mixed in with a, uh, a water glaze glue, or a powder glue, which helps it stick to the page. I shall also be using uh, white acrylic paint as well, but we'll get onto that in a moment. Uh, a sponge to dry the brush clean the, when we're cleaning the brush, and a pot with some water. Now, although this is a pint pot, you only need a small amount in the bottom. Um, you don't need an awful lot. We're not trying to dilute the paint. All we're trying to do is keep the brush clean. And the reason that you need to put a small amount in is if you had a pint of water in this and somebody knocked the brush over you'd have a pint of water all over the table so you only need a small amount and just keep changing it if it gets very very dirty uh, but i tend to just keep the brushes flat on the surface rather than leave them in the pots because it uh, protects them so what we're going to do is have a go at making our own color wheel now again for this I've got a white plate, in this case it's a white ceramic plate, you probably won't be using those in the classroom. Um, but if you can get something that's white and clean and washable, it's ideal, either a white palette or possibly even white dinner plates. don't know if they have white dinner plates anymore, but um, anyway. So this is our colour wheel, so I'm going to start off with just one of our colours. So I'm just going to put a blob of red on the plate and then going to put a blob of blue and a blob of yellow. There we go. So those are our three primary colours and we know that when you mix those together you get secondary colours, so if we're mixing red with blue we're going to get a range of purple, if we have blue and yellow we're going to get a green, and if uh, we mixed um, the red and the yellow we're going to get a set of oranges. And we don't really need any other colours, we also I've talked about using white, and I'll get to that in a moment, but one thing we don't use is black. Because if you start mixing black with these colours, they just very, very quickly go very muddy. So um, get rid of the black. That's, it's not necessary. So in order to change these colours into their secondary colours, we need to start mixing. But we don't need to start mixing any core amounts because it's about the different quantities that you use that actually makes the difference. So make sure I've got a dry brush. I can, you can start with any one of those. If you've got powder colour, just put a blob, mix up a strong blob of the red and the yellow and the blue on a palette of some sort, or you can just watch and see what happens here. So I'm going to take a small amount of red here and go to my blue. So because there's a lot of blue and only a small amount of red, it's going to stay fairly blue. Okay, so then take a little bit more, and it's still, and the blue is really, really quite strong. So it takes going to take quite a lot of red to actually start changing this to purples. But we'll keep going, and you can see what happens. So as we start moving closer and closer to the red, we can see that our colour is starting to go through our whole range of purples until it 
becomes, because I'm altering the proportion now of red to blue, it also gets us right through to red. So you can see how that colour almost infinitely changes all the way around as it goes. Now I'm going to make sure I keep this brush nice and clean, otherwise all the colours will go to be muddy. Now the next one on the circuit is the yellow, so I'm just going to take a small amount of yellow, because that's where we're going to end up. Add it to the red, and again, probably not a lot of difference, it's pretty strong red. So then I'm going to take a little bit more yellow and some more. And I've got small, smaller and smaller amounts of red on the brush and more and more yellow on the brush. So again, as I go around the plate, my colour is moving through a whole variety of oranges. And I get to here where it's almost gone back to pure yellow. And then the last one, we're going to end up at the blue. So I'm going to take a very small amount of blue because don't forget it's very, 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 very strong color, this blue, with um, yellow. So immediately it kind of goes really quite green, doesn't it? It's not going to take an awful lot to turn it to blue, I don't think. So hopefully you've been able to do something like this, or if you'd rather, you could just watch. So we get back to glue. So now we've got really nice colour wheel and you can see the whole variety of colours. I wouldn't want to count them all, but I should think there's a fair few there. And that's all from those primaries. So we've got primary, red, yellow, blue. Secondaries, which is our purples. Complementary. So if you take the three colours, add two of them together, yellow, yellow and blue, which is our green, and then look across the colour wheel to red, that's the complementary. So red and green are complementary. And similarly, blue and orange are complementary, purple and yellow are complementary. And you find that colour that those colour combinations used an awful lot. If you're aware of them, keep an eye out for them and you'll find them in all sorts of places. Packaging often uses it. You often find them in lots of paintings, artwork, even clothes and, and um, graphic design use those colour combinations. So one of the reasons why holly berries look so nice because you've got red berries on green leaves. So that's primary, secondary and complementary. Now you probably say, well, where's the brown? Well, that's where we get to the next layer, which is called tertiary colours, the third layer of colour. And basically um, what you would do to get brown is to take a red, add it to its complementary, which is in this case green. So I'm just going to take some, some green off here and add the two together. And that will give us quite a few shades of brown. So you can see the sort of browns coming out of that. Now if I want those browns to get darker, I just go this way and make the take the darker shades here. So I add more and more blue to it and that gives me quite a dark brown. And pretty close to a black and you probably wouldn't need to go any darker than that. If you wanted to lighten the brown you go back around the colour wheel this way, hit, get the yellow and then you can start ending up with, say that I should have washed my brush before I did that, get some yellows, got 
bit too much green on it but if I go back to my brown there so you can sort of see how you can create those that third layer that tertiary layer by mixing the complementaries together now the other pigment I talked about was white it's not strictly speaking a color but it's really useful so I'm going to put it in the center of the plate and what we can do is start to use that to lighten or tint the colors that we've got and the reason you use white particularly with acrylics or powder color is that to make the color lighter you add white pigment if you're working on watercolor then you wouldn't add any pigment at all in fact you'd leave the paper bare and the bare white the plain white of the paper is what gives us the whitest the lightest tones in a watercolor but for an acrylic uh, palette you would need to have a white acrylic so we can start to have a look at changing some of these if I take some of the oranges and add some whites I'll add a white to it you can see how and if I come sort of closer to the center you can see how add more and more white how that changes similarly I can go to my purples so I've got a range of purpley kind of colors um, if I want to go over here and look at some of the greens so I can get some sort of nice minty green by adding white quite pale green so the more white you get the pale you're going to get okay so you can see that just by different combinations of all these colors you can get a real quite extensive farrow and ball color chart out of it all in fact they're a bit more exciting than farrow and ball I think but anyway so that's our basic color wheel um, what we can do with this is actually to start thinking about matching colors uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, when we did the drawing workshop one of the things I was um, talking about was working on different colored papers and I think when we're working in these sorts of paints the best kind of paper to use is a is a very dark one in this case I've got a sort of dark blue black is ideal black sugar paper is perfect it doesn't cost an awful lot of money and it looks wonderful now if you are going to start um, mixing and matching so again we come to a color source here uh, this one you probably recognize this as the wave by Hokusai um, it's got a fairly limited palette mostly blues and a little bit of brown but I think that's quite interesting um, but working on white paper I think that would be really quite difficult because actually what you'd be doing is using these really pale tones here onto white paper so using a dark background is really um, ideal so if I look at the darkest tones which are going to be these really nice dark blues I'm going to take some of this and you can sort of see how it starts to show up on this kind of paper but next to it is a slightly lighter blue so I'm going to add some white to that and put that next to it now I'm not trying to I'm not trying to um, copy the image I'm just trying to use the image as a sort of stimulus to kind of get a nice uh, palette range but of course all the tops of this wave here is these wonderful kind of fingers of white so you can use sort of pure white now in terms of um, working on white paper that wouldn't work at all so it's much better to actually work on a darker color um, we've in the background we've got this sort of very pale greeny color so that's kind of in this area of the palette so it's sort of that sort of color tone and then 
the um, background is a dark, much darker. So you can see I should have washed my brush out. I can start off with a clean brush. So I go to my dark browns here, and a bit of yellow perhaps, and some of these darker ones. There we go. I can have that as my background. It's just and then the fishing boat, which is sort of hidden among, below this sort of monster wave, is a kind of pale uh, tan colour. So I'm going to mix sort of salmony colour. I don't know if you can see that mixed on the palette, but you can certainly see it on the paper. It's got a bit of a pink tinge to it. So colour mixing and matching is really really quite nice but it's something that you need to kind of work towards because it's not something you can do straight away. You can experiment, do a lot of experiments with um, colours in different materials and different medias so you can use coloured paper, you can use coloured fabrics but you also can use coloured dyes in water and that's what we're going to have a look at next.